All right, it is finally here. Welcome everybody to Apple Week. The day has come and it's been a long time coming and there's a lot of hype, I think deservedly, hopefully. Uh, how are you feeling about it, Robin? As someone that has been Apple through and through since my teenage years, System 7. Mac OS System 7. Wow, what a oh. thing that was. Uh, that's like, that was the first PC I ever owned was a Mac OS System 7 computer. And wow, uh, haven't we come a long way since then? But yes, it does seem like Apple that was once the kind of the cool purview of creatives and those who would just like, like to express themselves different. Not differently, but different. Thanks, Tim. Um, then that was the thing. But now it feels like it's no longer cool. It's more established. It's a bigger thing. And it's a bit of a bully. And Apple's kind of place is like that, the, the, you know, the, the connoisseur's technology brand of choice. It's kind of not there anymore. So it's a really interesting time. Are they going to release something groundbreaking, earth-shattering? Or is it just so easy to rip the rumors and get the leaks together that pretty much everything that we would want to know from this drop is pretty much already known. I kind of hate the rumors and leaks thing. It's, you know, I know it kind of ruins the surprise. Yeah. Is it worth running through some of the rumors that we know a little bit uh, just to kind of catch up on what we're expecting? Everyone's been calling these Apple glasses and these are not going to be glasses. There is a huge body of evidence that suggests that Apple has been working on a pair of spectacles, like proper spectacles, lightweight things that anybody would be comfortable wearing because the thing about vr heads is it's like you look pretty goofy wearing them you are wrapped up in a world in which you can't see everyone and you can walk into furniture and stuff mixed reality solves that pass through solves that but fundamentally they're not a device that you're going to just walk down the street to the shops in and get context sensitive you know information about the world around you so the glasses are rumored to be somewhere on the roadmap but these are going to be much more like the meta quest headset so a consumer grade mixed reality headset that's super comfortable to wear that has high resolution screens inside but is pretty much like a legacy vr experience with this pass-through component and then hopefully using ar kit to develop kind of ar experiences through that but i think what's most important about this is that it's not going to be like the iphone where people will be queuing around the block to buy it this is going to be the precursor to what will then be what apple i assume hope their next big compute platform their next big kind of great idea around personal computing or personal technology devices i think so and i think the danger here is that because it is apple people are expecting it to be those glasses that's what's in everyone's head everyone's kind of like seen that future and can imagine that where you're walking down the street and suddenly stuff pops out from the corner of the street you're at a festival and the musician is like taller than the entire festival and all that kind of mixed reality stuff and to me, like mixed reality makes the most sense and is probably the coolest out and about when you're exploring stuff in the real world a la Pokemon Go, which still was way ahead of its time. I still it's great. So that is the, the danger, I think, is that people are going to be expecting that and then they're going to get delivered this thing that's a bit like a Meta Quest Pro, but probably loads better. Mixed reality may... I don't know how much sense it makes at home, really. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I worry about, is that it's kind of set up to be so big that people are going to judge it ahead of its time maybe well i I did some digging around on this and and there are certain key things that seem to jump out now obviously this device represents an enormous set of just physical challenges like how do you take what is essentially an iphone strap it to your face and make that a workable experience so they've obviously got high resolution displays they're going to have prescription lenses in there we think they're going to you know try and make the experience of being in the glasses as immersive as possible but the the front of the glass is going to be curved that's a huge challenge finding a piece of glass thin enough but also strong enough to keep the device lightweight and comfortable and i suspect you can probably look at the pro headphones for design cues and i think that's what a lot of the the leaks were kind of Mm. you know paying tribute to as well it's going to have its own operating system xros but the the thing is you know they have a very well-developed app ecosystem and if you are a developer that creates os apps then it should be relatively straightforward for you to then port those experiences or at least start developing on that ecosystem and that is why of course we have wwdc five days of 
experiences and designing the future and like, whatever that ends up being. I'm always a little kind of skeptical about these things, but then I am not a developer, so what do I know? Yeah, this, this see that is yeah, that's the side of it that I am less familiar with. But I am excited. It'd be I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Obviously, everyone's quite excited because they are going to whatever they do, it's going to be not rubbish. You'd hope. So I just think they're not they're not they're not stupid. So we'll see. Well, the announcement the announcement says code new worlds and it's a version of the apple logo that is in ar right has this sort of chromatic aberration and stuff going on so it's obviously talking about vision and and the way that light passes through lenses that's kind of the idea here so mark your calendars for an exhilarating week of technology and community Uh Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh-huh be among the first to learn the latest about apple platforms technologies and tools yeah that's not how the world works anymore like everything's been leaked we are expecting to see other products this week but i mean when apple releases a new piece of hardware a new platform the world sits up and takes notice because they don't generally release something like that until they're absolutely convinced that an enormous number of people will be ready to pick it up Mm. and use it but again like i said i don't think anyone's going to be queuing around the block to spend the rumored three thousand dollars on this headset now bear in mind that the quest pro when it came out was seen to be mightily expensive at a cost of $1,500. And we know for a fact that Meta has been losing money on every Quest Pro, sorry, Quest headset that it's been selling, uh, despite the fact that they're quite reasonably priced for a device which is, let's be honest, really fun to use. Mm. So, yeah, where, how do you price something like this? Well, this is uh, the weird thing, isn't it? That We'll move on from Apple in a second because we're going to have a lot of Apple across the channel this weekend as soon as stuff drops. Base will be the place to go to, to keep up to date with it all. But... I can't quite work out their strategy here in that it's a high-priced, rumoured headset that isn't going to be... I mean, it's going to be consumer-grade, but it's not going to be for the everyday person. People can't afford that, and it's not the out-and-about and the street stuff, so it's it's setting the trend. It's for developers first, but demonstrating what they can do as a, as a way of what is about to happen. It seems like a, an odd... It seems like it's not the right time to release something like this, would be my guess, but maybe I'm obviously wrong because they've made a decision so i can't quite work it out well you, you you also have to think about the external factors playing into all of this because let's take a step back for a second every single technology company pretty much i can't think of any that haven't has been laying off staff in like massive numbers like serious serious numbers it obviously started with twitter facebook meta laid off an absolute ton of them do you know the one company that didn't apple so why not are they in a position that they have so much cash on hand that they can afford not to? Or is there so much important work to be done that they simply couldn't afford to? I don't know here. So that's one thing. It's a really notable exception to the rule. Now, obviously, Apple is still exceedingly profitable. In the essay film I did this week about Tim Sweeney, I kind of you know, compared where Epic Games is at. And you think of Epic Games as a very big company, but they make you know, somewhere in the region of $6.5 billion a year, most of which comes from Fortnite. One game, whereas Apple is, you know, way up in the 300s or so. They make an absolute shit ton of money, tons and tons and tons of money. So obviously they're doing very nicely there, but they haven't been laying people off. There's also the rise of AI. Generative AI, we think, is the fuel that creates the opportunity for the metaverse to exist at scale because it's able to generate things on the fly, because it's able to populate worlds with NPCs, that are immersive, conversational, and can be your pal in a non-threatening way. All of these things mean that even if Apple wasn't ready to, the threat posed by Mark Zuckerberg's like, you know, serious investment in this space when Apple has been working on it for so long. In many ways, it feels like the way that Google has been has been very, very reticent to kind of push too quickly into AI and has now been forced to. It feels like Apple probably had to have their hand tipped by everything else that was moving so that they could still get a product which has got, you know, eight or so years rumored of development in it to market in enough time for people to adopt it and not get pulled over into Mm. this beautiful shiny thing over here. That's makes sense. But I I mean, honestly, we're just speculating here, but there are so many things moving here that, that you feel, I think, that this long rumored kind of metaverse thing is starting to grind its gears and, and start moving. There are just so many different signals coming from everywhere mm. that at some point the skeptic's gonna go, you know what, I don't like it, 
but I'm just gonna have to go along with it. It it I don't know. Which is kind of how a, a lot of technology adopts, right? People don't like change and they don't like things, and it is clunky at first. And transferring your songs over to your iPod, genius as it was, was a nightmare because you'd sync it and it would delete everything. Like you forget about all those moments and the internet not really working and people scared of online banking. Yes. Like it's always that way. Actually, you just forget afterwards because it's it's quick and easy now. So it's nothing new. Also, final point on this, and then we'll move on to the other signals. Well, I have I have one last point, okay. which I also want to raise. So you, you go first, and I'll give you mine. Okay, my mine is just that I'd love it if if the Apple bots were sat there and were like, let's just watch what Meta do, uh, because they know how tech moves, and they know that usually people kind of don't like the first iteration of stuff. So we'll let them do it and sort of, no, I don't want to say mess up, because the Quest is brilliant, but you know there's there's stuff that hasn't been great there as well and then they're just ready to to scoop everybody up afterwards like it's probably part of the plan and it's kind of genius well you were you were saying i don't know why they were priced it at three grand and the answer is actually quite simple they price it three grand because they can there is a whole community of people that buy the latest apple products buy the first ones because it's a flex because Apple basically they make luxury items, mm. so Apple is essentially is a mass consumer luxury brand, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. But they are more than capable of producing products which are vastly overpriced. Really, let's be honest. Like you know, some of the the watch editions that were out there were insane. People buy them, they do. Like I watch MKBHD's channel. The guy cannot help himself buying the first one because he needs to have it. He is so deep down the rabbit hole of mac mania that he can't help himself so that's a really good barometer of this that you know if somebody else has it well i need to have it i need to be the one out and about flexing these things because i can afford it because i can you know socially signal that i am in the club yeah there's a really good clip that um michael saylor off of bitcoin wisdom talks about this from <laughs> from years ago <laughs> you make it sound like it's some kind of crappy podcast michael saylor micro strategy my friend micro strategy he's like being the biggest bitcoin bull basically sinking every penny that Michael oh, no, yeah. has he's into probably... bitcoin buying the top like if you counter traded michael saylor you would have been a very rich human what a dipstick but yes yes that guy yes yeah oh, oh, i like him i think he's smart and cool michael strategy Michael Saylor of Bitcoin Wisdom, the, the number one resource for anyone looking to learn about cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Yeah. Michael says, buy now. Don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he does. There is an old clip of him talking about Apple and it's how it's going to progress. And he makes that exact point about them kind of being like sort of a fashion, a luxury fashion company as well. And the fact that you're not just you are buying the tech, but you're also exactly buying what you said, like the flex and the. They bought Beats. Yeah, Beats is well, a exactly, luxury yeah. fashion. The, the, the Beats is luxury. Like spending three hundred and fifty dollars on a pair of headphones, that's idiotic. Well, the it's idiotic. Uh, the AirPods that over the head ones are five hundred dollars, aren't they? So I know luxury, luxury good. It's a luxury brand. Mm. Like I don't care what anyone says. Like uh, yes. Everyone can own an iPhone, but you feel special. It's a luxury thing. And luxury brands traditionally are idiotic. That's the whole point of them. Mm. There's a brand equity that far surpasses the physical cost of making the goods. That is what luxury is about. It's about the brand. It's about the badge. And Apple are brilliant at that. At least they have been. Yes. All right. Well, um, yeah, everything that drops this week, we will be across it. So um, it is going to be a fun week, whatever happens. We're going to be we're going to be those idiots blabbering on about Apple breathlessly like everybody is. Oh, look, it's Ooh, got a bezel. Lovely. It's got a bezel. Yeah, it's yeah. got a bezel, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a bloody nice bezel, though, I reckon. Um, OK, I'm straight. <laughs> Shall we rattle through the the other signals of the metaverse? The other oh, stories? God, yes, because there's some yes, go for it. big stuff that happened this week. So I think this is is a huge one. So we've been following Nike's dot swoosh stuff recently. We, ha we had a good episode with a uh, like OG sneaker artist who talked about this really um, intelligently about what Nike are doing. Obviously, they acquired Artifact, um, the sort of you know metaverse native uh, digital sneaker and gaming fashion brand, but they have done their own platform uh for virtual sneakers um, dot swoosh and they're going for the reddit kind of model of never mentioning the word nft but kind of taking the legacy of the air force one into this new world and uh, you know asking people to remix it and get their their digital sneakers uh, so they did that and they sold uh, over a million dollars uh this most 
recent week. So the drop was really successful that they've been kind of talking about for a while. And then this announcement dropped of them partnering with EA Games, which is huge, um, I think. Uh, and it seems obvious what's happening here is that you'll soon be able to bring in your dot swoosh digital sneakers into games. Um, they didn't say specifically what yet, but there was an American football in the kind of teaser. So it seems likely that it would be Madden. Seems likely that FIFA will do it as well. Maybe even kind of PGA Tour and that sort of thing. So I think it's a major moment. It's, it's essentially NFTs and games have arrived. Uh, they're doing it in a smart way and it's not ruffled the feathers of the rest of kind of the NFT gaming conversation because they've done it in, in a way that makes sense. So yeah, I, I'm au excited contraire. about this. Au contraire, au contraire, mon frère. Go on. It has ruffled a few feathers. I'll tell you why. If you are an artifact supporter, which I have been since a very long time ago. Mm, same. Then you would look at this and go, hang on a second. I thought the, the, the kind of Air Force One stuff was going to go through Artifact. I thought that was where the digital version of this, the NFT version of this. But obviously Nike now have this dot swoosh. Artifact is sort of embedded into dot swoosh, but like it's just it's just kind of a bit weird. Exhibit A. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you through a little sort of dance through the ages here because I have this, the Meta Pigeon. Oh so yes. I, I wasn't a sneakerhead, but look 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 at the ridiculous kicks that I'm wearing. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. Love to see yeah. it. <laughs> what is that? I am a man in his mid forties, and I have I have become an absolute addict to footwear, and I don't even wear it. I keep it in the boxes. So the Meta Pigeon was their first artifact shoe. So you buy an uh, an artifact NFT, and you can forge it. So you can do these forging events where you can turn the NFT into a physical good. So this is it. This looks. Come on, focus. There we go. This looks like a nike shoe it is not it is just a generic shoe with a wrap on it and this was a collab with jeff staple the legendary sneaker designer and that was all beautiful then they released the clones and the clones all had these different dna's so you had humans you had robots you had aliens you had angels you had uh reptiles yes so then they released these air force ones and before they did that they did these special artist drops so this is a, this is Corey Van Liu, I believe, who did the, the rap on this. So this is the very first Artifact Air Force One drop. And then they have the, all the uh, different Clone X ones that are coming out as well. I got every single one of them because I'm an idiot. Because <laughs> I love them. I love them. They are amazing. And now I'm like... I'm a fanboy. I'm now like, I don't even know why. There's something about it. There's something about the just being... F Grabbing the first earliest iterations of NFT backed shoes just felt like something I wanted to do. I don't even know. I don't even know why. Because I, I don't wear them. I don't even like. I don't even like how they feel on my feet. It it's is but it so is ridiculous. the most like it's the the biggest kind of signal or the one that makes the most sense instantly. I think because you've got the stuff you can wear in these virtual worlds that are coming, and then also you forge them into the physical world. Like they have nailed that. Uh, so it made sense. I want to be a part of that because that does feel like the most clean way of transitioning into this new world, right? And and the the funny thing is, what has been sort of forgotten about with Artifact is just how embedded they were in the gaming community. Mm. Like, you know, Chris Lee started out making skins. He was a skins designer, and Benoit was deeply embedded in luxury fashion, but then also in the gaming community as well. Like, you you talk to those guys, and like they they they're in it deep. So it was obviously the made the most sense for them to be acquired by Nike. They now have a ton of money to develop and do the things that they're they're trying to do. And they're like Artifact in the process of just scaling up and trying to become the the kind of monster Web three fashion crossover brand that they need to be. But it does feel like it, it's sort of happening kind of at the same time. You're not quite sure where you sit. And alongside this, you've got Adidas that kind of did this weird pivot from their metaverse strategy i've also got an adidas tracksuit that came from the first drop that they did ridiculous thing you'll see me wearing it in the latest <laughs> SM video we did by the way what a bell end um so yeah i i yes like you i think this is very much stealth red pilling people into nfts i don't know i mean i do know how i feel about that which is like if you're going to do nfts own it don't like do it by subterfuge because at some point people go you did what, you assholes? Or maybe they'll just love the product. I don't know. But, you know, fair enough. They're, they're doing it. And, like, while everyone's going, yeah, crypto's dead, yeah? 
It's like, no. Yeah. Well, no, 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 fool. It's funny, isn't it? When it, everybody's looking the other way, these stories in the bull market would be huge news everywhere, all over the place. There's the, the same, you know, there's a good amount of stuff that is happening here. It's certainly nothing that's going away, and that's that's when it's time to pay attention. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's big news. And there's nothing to say that artifacts might not end up in get in some of these worlds as well, or the collabs kind of start featuring. And I, f- I feel like it, it's not uh, riled me as someone who loves artifacts as well. I feel like it's part of the plan, but yeah, it probably say? is. It probably is. I mean, it's it's definitely the hallmark of a lazy critic to dance on people's graves when the going is rough. Um, so anyone that's kind of writing, oh, the metaverse is dead. Long live the metaverse. Articles now. Come it's on, hilarious, isn't it? Come There's on, an amazing um, article that went round. Uh, that I think Herman Narula posted about, it was 20 years ago and it was about how the internet is dead. And it was just basically a carbon copy of the metaverse stuff. There's even an amazing website, uh, the Bitcoin obituary, which just documents every time the mainstream press has said that Bitcoin's dead over the years. And it's, it's hilarious. It's, um, yeah. But. It's like they've never heard of the Lindy effect. Yeah. Well, let's not get into that. Yeah. Um, there was, a, you know, while we're on this, Epic Games it has revealed that <clears throat> 20 more Web3 games are coming to its store. Boom! Here's Web3 <laughs> Games. Ah! Get out. Get out. Get out. Uh, it's it's inevitable now, right? Surely. Yeah, Epic are just allowing these kind of games to happen. They're, they're not developing any Web3 games that we know about. But one that is doing really well is called Blanco's Block Party. I've not played it myself, but it's like a party-style racing shooting game where you can customize loads of stuff. But it's not. they're not going after the play to earn stuff necessarily you have a character if you want to level it up you can buy stuff there's different currencies that are still locked in game some you can buy with dollars some you earn just as you go as well so it's like it's asking less of people it's asking less money from people but it's there if you want to do stuff so it's happening slowly there's an amazing thread that someone posted um on twitter i think his name is john Wu. i'll link it yeah where he talks about yeah the whole idea of play to earn which has been debated for ages but he made a good point with the new Zelda game that came out that that he is not only happy to pay for that, but if he could pay for more experience of like the amazing level of the artistry in this game and the experience and and everything with Zelda, he would pay more for it. And he wants the developers to get that money because they should, because it's amazing. And and he, and I think that is very true for games that are very story driven and are artistically amazing. And where you are really on a generally solo mission to, you know, unlock and play through and everything. It doesn't really make massive sense to have the earn element in there because it changes the dynamics and you're doing it for fun and you're doing it for the experience. But I think what we saw previously was, was the free-to-play model, the whole Fortnite thing, where it's a very different style of game, where it makes sense that you're, you're going back to generally a similar type of gameplay and you're leveling up and you're unlocking stuff and you're buying skins and that kind of thing. And that seems where all of this fits. Likewise with the Nike Dot Swoosh sneakers with like FIFA Ultimate Team, it would make sense that you can kind of upgrade stuff with different things like that. So I think it depends what you're talking about. And I think it's true of story-driven artistic games that this won't factor in it but with other games i think it's it's only coming yeah it, it is interesting like, i i have been playing fortnite every day for the last two months thoroughly enjoying it so down the rabbit hole with that thing because it's got this it's got this daily measurable progress thing both in terms of your xp but also in terms of your perceived skill and how good you're getting at the game and like I found myself looking at skins, buying v- V bucks, and I, <laughs> I went there. I have become that person. Yeah, and, and I, it happens suddenly. Not... But what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do, because I've spent so long not being a gamer, I've been trying to reawaken that position in myself, so I understand what it's like to to be protective of of, of something that you play and not want it to change. But I'm also trying to understand how if if you had web3 assets <clears throat> plugged into something like fortnite or into that economy or that ecosystem does it make it any better actually um truly genuinely does that improve the experience because if it doesn't then don't do it but if it can do that and in particular i'm talking about i have bought a skin in fortnite and i don't want it anymore and someone else might want it could we do a trade yeah i think that 100 percent could be a thing that you could do safely and verifiably over the blockchain totally makes sense whether you would want to replace v bucks with a cryptocurrency 
I don't think so. Yeah, when you link it to the real world markets, I think, especially for a younger audience, it all gets very dangerous, doesn't it? Because then you are starting to talk about market cycles and things that people don't know or care about and suddenly they're you know having they're forced to sort of play in that arena when actually that's not really why they joined a game but like you see there was a a video that went viral recently which i think was a fake but it was like a video uh, of somebody who'd refunded their fortnite account and they'd they'd like refunded it to five grand or whatever and everyone went mad they were like how do i do this like how do i do that you know i spent so much time and then they've grown out of it so i think a market for that is, is obvious and it's happening with CSGO all, you know, all the time with these crazy valuations. That all makes sense, I think. But yeah, I have a tough time linking it to real world markets unless it's an entirely Web3 game and you're bought into that from day one. I think I think it will all exist, but uh, I don't know if the mainstream big games will link to financial markets. It seems seems a tricky thing. I, I If you look at what's happening with... with I mean, I, I spend so much time investigating Epic and what's being built there. If you look at Fab, they're kind of... All you know, every, all you can eat marketplace that connects developers making three D assets with people who have other things. You know, the whole thing is designed to be a, a sort of an Amazon or an eBay for three D assets. I don't think it would be too difficult to see that that might become then a portal for safe trading of assets from Fortnite itself. But it will require probably quite a lot of architectural rewriting in order to make that possible. It's not something you just switch on. While we were talking about, you were talking about kids, um, I talk to my daughter every day about Roblox and about how she's trading items from Royal High. And it's a, there's a little trading mechanism built into Royal High. But she got scammed and she said, no, I, I must never, ever accept an offer in Robux. I was like, very wise of you. You got scammed. You lost some items. You have learned a valuable mm. life lesson there. But actually, Epic themselves were fined, I think it's in the order of like $500 million. I forget the exact number by the FTC for tricking users into making unwanted charges. They're using uh, these dark patterns, yeah? These design tricks known as dark patterns mm. aimed at getting consumers of all ages to make unintended in-game purchases. So yeah, there's this whole addiction mechanic around exactly what I've been talking about, which is I'm in there, I see a thing, I'm like, ooh, that'd be nice to play this game in and the funny thing about Fortnite skins is you can only ever see them from the back when you're the player mm. <laughs> yeah that is thing. Funny, isn't it? you yeah. know but uh i i understand this so so epic is not all roses uh they have done some slightly shady things but anyway yeah. we should move on from there because there's other stuff to talk about for sure yeah okay this next one is uh interesting development on the ai music scene so it is beginning to disrupt uh music creation and we've seen it with the kind of fake drake songs and frank sinatra singing a uh, little baby or various other things um which are quite hilarious but yeah people are, are now beginning to embrace it the first example of that was the grimes story where she um has released some software where you can use her voice and use ai tools and she will split the revenue uh, with you which was a, probably a smart move from her because people are going to sort of do this stuff anyway even if the big labels are trying to crush it so this story uh, it's a company called pixel links and it unveils uh, cores, which are, according to them, the future of music creation, remixing and fan engagement with AI companions. Do you want to take us through what's happening here? Well, so this is coming from Dead Mouse and Richie Horton. Dead Mouse is a, I mean, he's probably known as a DJ more than anything else. He wears a, you know, a crazy mask on his head. But actually, the thing about Dead Mouse is technologically very sophisticated. He's very innovative in the things that he does. And this is an attempt to kind of use Web3 NFTs to create these AI companions that will allow you to remix officially licensed music from all over the place, from part, from the Dead Mouse label, and just make your own music. So if you've seen people creating text to video, using Midjourney to create interesting photos and images and this kind of thing, this is probably the next version of that, but using music so empowering anybody to dig into a pool of licensed ip and get a result that is really 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 good now like with any tool you know the quality of the prompt or the quality of the way you compile all this will be you know on you but generally what tends to happen with music stems in particular is that the starting point is actually pretty good and then like what you end up doing with that can be interesting on top of it. I mean, the, the first sort of weird instance of this I came across was an app by BT, Brian Trance, the, um, the trance DJ, where you could kind of remix a track on the fly within an app 
and Brian Eno has definitely released apps where you could do that. But this is the first time I've seen it where it's AI plus NFTs plus the ability, I guess, if you create a really interesting track to mint it as an NFT. But like with all these things, it's fundamentally reducing the barrier to creative expression and also empowering artists to own the output of their creative expression. And then the flip side of that is, does this mean you're basically just going to get a mediocre same same from a bunch of people who will use once and then never use again? Or is this going to inspire a new generation of people who would never have put their hands on a musical instrument or touched anything like this and kick off a new creative renaissance? Yeah, I think so. It probably follows a similar path to iPhone cameras and everything else. Whether how much of that stuff will rise to the top and be good is another question, isn't it? But it, it, it does open up the access to everyone to start playing with music. and Yeah, it's interesting. And it's it's a smart way to embrace it. And yeah, I, I think those will probably be the, the winners, the people who uh, realize this is fairly unstoppable. So how do we how do we embrace it? And how do we do something useful with yeah, it? Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because the the thing that, that Epic did back in 2012 was they got investment from Tencent. Tencent are huge in games as a service so this is idea of uh, instead of just releasing a a, a game in a you know as a box title and then you play it and and then it's done you release a game free and then people buy things through their experiences of that game and the game can keep evolving and fortnite's like six years old now this is a similar kind of thing with this music thing which is you buy this chorus and it becomes an access point to a bunch of drops and experiences that refresh on a regular basis and if you can get that experience to work really well, then you create this timeline, you create this this leveling up mechanic. And those who love it and really into that, they will probably embrace it. It feels a little niche at the moment, but then, you know, music is universal and more and more people are now creating digital music and, you know, becoming DJs and I don't know. It, it's a really, I feel like it plugs in really nicely to the, the dance, the electro- electronic music scene, but I don't know yet what the killer kind of output of this is yeah it's smart to compare it to that Fortnite model which does seem to be the model of the future as we talked about advertising dying and stuff generally online it's that you you set up a service and then yeah people pay to kind of upgrade stuff and and uh yeah kind of come back and back and back and whether that could happen in music in some form with is interesting isn't it that seems like that might be where things are heading generally um did we just come up with a new acronym Mass. We've got software as a service, SARS. <laughs> We've got games as a service, GARS. And from Dead Mouse comes Mash. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's going to stick. Let's move on. The most recent episode, we talked about uh, the progression of deep fakes, which have obviously been a thing for ages, but now it's, it's one click deep fakes and they're really good. And you can do it in the cloud with one photo reference. And it, it's. Um, yes, we, we put me in the office. Yeah. And it took 11 minutes with one photo of me and it was alarmingly good. Have you ever played around with like deep face? Have you ever used deep Yeah, face we studio? talked about these deep face live as well. So so there's now cuz cuz that was still like a GitHub program I think that you had to download and run on your computer and you need you need some knowledge. It's pretty simple to do, but you need some. There, there's websites now that are just doing everything in the clouds so you can, you know, one image and create amazing deep fakes. We did it for that episode, but also you can go live like that program deep face live means on a live stream you can change your face to tom cruise or whoever else you can do that now in the cloud through a website as well so it's like it's just becoming so ridiculously easy i tell you the thing that, that's really shocking like my face like this an ai could recognize my eyes can recognize my nose my mouth so if i lean in close to the camera the ai keeps me in focus because it knows that i'm a face the problem with deep fakes is if you go sideways it just loses it completely it cannot figure out the profile of the human face in profile what was really shocking about this one was that it could like we did it obviously with elon musk because who else are you going to test with and elon turns his head to the left it still looks like elon i had not seen that before Mm. uh, because that's always the the kind of the clue when you see deep fake stuff that like they never ever let the face turn to the side but like the the really good deep tom crew's account actually can do that now so obviously you know it's not ever a question of it can't do it it's just when will it be able to do it uh it's always that it can't do it yet yes it will soon it will soon yeah uh, all right well um final thing that we wanted to just quickly cover was the meta quest gaming showcase that happened uh, last week so 
Uh, we're still kind of waiting for those huge titles that bring everybody to the platform, the kind of Netflix moment where you get Netflix because you want to watch something on it and you buy a, a Quest 2 or 3 because you want to play one of these. But they announced Assassin's Creed, which is one of the most successful games franchise of all time. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR is coming, which was a pretty big moment. It sold over 155 million games, that series. Also, Stranger Things, a VR experience, which looks pretty cool on the trailer. They've gone for the kind of like graphic novel style, which kind of works quite well in VR because you're not relying on yeah. super high fidelity, crazy AAA graphics. You can focus on the gameplay with a style that works really well. They also announced Power Wash Simulator, which is the reason that people hate VR. Is like, well, or maybe you love it if you, you know, there's loads of stupid stuff on there that is fun. But I, when you when you're doing a gaming showcase and you announce alongside Assassin's Creed's Power Wash Simulator, I, I kind of think it gives gives fuel to the people who hate VR that maybe this isn't the future. But I don't know. And yet, and yet, rewinding really to like. <laughs> Who's making the weird stuff like Richie's plank experience or yeah, true. You know, this is true. Those kind of things like that's. I mean, like Half Life in VR, genuinely, absolutely terrifying. I I can't do it. I'm so freaked out constantly by being in that. I mean, like ugh, like Bone Works as well. I just get so freaked out being in there. But mm. like you know, you give me a power wash, I'm I'm all over it. Like yeah. I'm still. Pistol Whip for me is is like my favorite game. Um, we should definitely talk about this this quest launch because, I mean, I guess what what you're asking is if I own a Quest Two, is this a reason for me to switch to a Quest Three? Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. So obviously they've got the controllers that are very similar to the controllers on the Quest Pro, and those are really nice controllers, by the way. They and are haptic great. feedback now, right as well. And a haptic feedback, yes. And then in in you know in as is per the usual with the Meta Quest that the the trailer itself is very peppy and you know you've got lovely delightful people in lovely delightful settings getting really excited about putting a headset on and then they put the headset on and they talk about this full color pass through and then they give you this sort of uh, first person view of what the full color pass through looks like it doesn't look anything like that I can mm. guarantee you I've got a Quest Pro it doesn't look like that. You're not just going to be able to see the world in glorious as if it's real. It doesn't look like that. It just does not. You get this kind of weird, grainy, like like slightly blown out version of color. I mean, granted, it's better than the black and white one, but it isn't anywhere near like, oh, look, it's just like real life, but I'm seeing through the goggles. No, 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 no. Definitely not. So that's a bit of a, uh, a bait and switch. And then there's like, I guess this whole mixed reality thing so you're going to be able to like play a game on your table at home there is a way to play a game on your table <laughs> yeah. at home just Normally. go and buy <laughs> guess who or monopoly uh, you don't have to get a 400 hundred dollar headset to do it and you can do it with people you can actually see at the same time i don't know it's it's a tough one tough one yeah. like you said they need they need a killer game they need flappy birds for your for your quest i don't know yeah, I, I do. Mixed reality clearly is going to be a, a trend that's coming up and it is going to be great in lots of ways. The at-home mixed reality experience seems novelty at the moment. I can't quite buy into it, but hopefully I'll have my mind change. Uh, I know, like we, we have like these, sometimes we have these VR sessions where like my, my son's playing Among Us and my daughter's playing Beat Saber. It's depressing because it's so antisocial. Everyone's just mm. in their little world doing their own little thing and just like, well, this is nice. This is why we had a family. So we could just do this <laughs> together. We're all together in the same room in our own little virtual reality world. I don't know. Yeah, we're... Um, I don't know. It's an iterative update. I mean, I'm sure it's extremely impressive in many, many ways. But the fundamental thing, which is, is it more fun than the Quest 2? I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, it always comes down to, to trying it, doesn't it? So uh, probably will be forced to buy one anyway because i'll be jealous and then want to see it and uh that's what they want but probably good yes well there we go yeah so all right um as we know it's going to be apple mania for the next few days so base will be the place to come for that and uh yeah we're gonna be covering it pretty much um daily really so uh what yeah. is this what is this new angelo thing you put this on the, oh, on the okay. sheet yeah this is kind of cool so i mean you're probably better explaining nerf stuff but you know, nerfs, as I understand it, is you can take a load of photos of a scene and then create a explorable, uh, you know, kind of 3D 
environment from the photo so you can do cool stuff with different camera angles you can even bring that into unreal engine and people have done cinematic stuff with an environment that's been created from photos they've announced something this is an nvidia announcement neuralangelo catchy uh where you can now neural do angelo neural that's michael angelo but neural that's yes. definitely how you say it um yes yeah, it's, it's 2d videos into immersive 3d environments so i guess it's even easier and uh yeah you, you can just capture a video and then you can explore that environment which is is pretty crazy and makes all this stuff a little bit easier to access as well yeah that's pretty sick i mean i guess it's all <clears throat> capturing stuff from your phone the thing about these these tools is like one to like 80 is pretty damn incredible but getting from 80 to like 95 is still a buttload of work like nerfs are amazing but you, they don't hold up to kind of scrutiny but then maybe they don't need to i think that's a, a lot of the, the stuff that we're discovering with working with the mocap volume you have this trade-off you can have incredible rendered animation or you can just do stuff in real time and the real time stuff has this weird kind of smeary stuff to it sometimes and sometimes the frame rate drops out but because you can do it so fast you can have a lot more fun just making stuff and then you, in your back of your mind you're thinking well the real time will just get progressively better and better and we can always do like normal rendered animation if we need to but let's really dial you know dial in the real time component because that's kind of the most magical part of it i had a shout out i wanted to give to charlie cohen the nft fashion designer i mean she's charlie's a badass she's been like someone on my radar for a long long time she got a investment around around three and a half million back in march of 2022 from some pretty interesting people bitcraft ventures venture reality fund paris hilton twitch co-founder kevin lynn and matthew bull who's really the godfather of the modern thesis around the metaverse and she's dropped some pretty big news just recently which is that she's going to be designing a collection with diablo 4 from blizzard entertainment so the upcoming mm. diablo 4 game and she has a physical collection that she designs that will go alongside that and with some nfts as well and that's pretty significant because you're starting to see gaming and fashion collide with nfts and a gaming publisher that is prepared to just bring that stuff in despite the inevitable pushback that will come from gamers i haven't read kotaku's view on this because to be honest with you kotaku is so toxic at times that it's just unreadable but massive shout out to charlie cohen she's forging a path that is just fantastic we actually did a live stream with the fabricant yesterday doing a live mint of their co-creation tool creating digital fashion garments as well but i did it as my character in unreal and i was minting on a screen that was actually in unreal engine with me and shaking my tail around it was pretty dope i mean it's still clunky as hell we're still so so very early on all this stuff but like unless we really go for it you know really try and scare ourselves of what we're trying to pull off here we're not going to find anything original or different or new it's just we're going to kind of render back down to the stuff that we already have and i don't think there's any need to right now there's no rules go be weird yeah it's, it's the time to be weird and try random stuff that's uh yeah that's the whole point it's exciting isn't it for sure that's cool that's another ah. big moment for yeah fashion and nfts and games isn't it? that the the pieces are coming for sure are you gonna let me have my little fanboy moment go on like we released our Tim Sweeney film yesterday. Tim Sweeney! Yeah. Which was basically the Tim Sweeney's Metaverse master plan is genius. And here's why. Which is a really interesting dig back through the history of Epic Games, where Tim has gone and the strategies that they've taken and these four different phases of Epic Games. Uh, but Tim saw it. Yes. He's actually seen it. He responded. He said, yeah, I love this kind of weird essay stuff. Because um, I was doing all sorts of weird stuff in the video. But yeah uh, the fact is we got on his radar which you know that's a big moment kind of yeah. means something I, got, I, had a, I had i had a little bit of a of a, of a glow this morning and yeah my corn rightly face. so because yes. because uh yeah everyone's been working their ass off and to have tim sweeney who absolutely the, so if you haven't seen man. that film go watch it it's a lovely palatable 20 minutes of youtube perfection which there's I mean, cowboy how, hats how much, and how much, fraz and lots of epic there, games there are good. there are there are many costume changes um yeah so there you go uh, I'm really embracing my fractal identity as a metaverse medicine. <laughs> that's what it's all about. It Kids is. Good stuff. All right, yeah. Well, um, that's that's this episode. Uh, excited for Apple Week. So uh, make sure you hit subscribe and follow if you haven't already. And yeah, we'll explore all this mad stuff together. 
Let's do it. Yes. Also, I'm going to put a shout out. So we have a full community called the Base Heads. <clears throat> if you're picking up this podcast just casually and you want to kind of get more into the weeds with us, we discuss a whole bunch of different things. We have a community of creators that build off the videos that we make and they're sharing all these weird AI tools and they're starting to produce some seriously dope stuff. So if you want to get deep into the weeds and get more of an insight into what we're actually up to with Base, please join there. We have a Discord channel. And of course, subscribe to the, the podcast because we love you for it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And I Shout think, out Mr. Bass and Jerry from the community Mr. and Bass many and others Jerry. making good stuff. Absolutely. I think that was the pod. Was Boom. that the pod? That's the pod. Boom. Done. That was the pod. Adios, amigos. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Got to always end with that, I think, now. Yeah.